Let's see the next one here. It's number four. And this is an ankle mass from a 50 year old uh, patient. All right, so one of the things that I noticed is uh, we have s separate nodules yeah. of, of this myxoid uh, component, and then we have uh, fibrous bands, it looks like. Yeah, and you know what this fibrous band is, actually? That's his tendon, okay. or ligament, or fascia, one of the two. Uh, because, see, look how uh, it's got that wavy... This is what I call the ramen noodle sign of Fulton in honor of my former fellow Ed Fulton. Ed came up with the idea that this looked like the dried ramen noodles in the package. And I was like, oh, that's, I've been trying to find a good word to explain it. So I made a video about that. And now Ed's getting, he's getting a lot of fame and mileage out of the fact that he came up with this ramen noodle idea. But what happens is dense regular connective tissue, tendon, fascia, ligament, when it fixes, it it kind of contracts up and, and all the bundles of collagen get super wavy. So we always teach that nerves wavy. Uh -uh. Not wavy like that. This super wavy ramen noodle in a package kind of wavy, accordion kind of wavy, is usually dense regular. And sometimes tumors like desmoid fibromatosis or other things that are collagenous can do that. But here, I think, just because I remember this case was actually an amputation, um, and I didn't tell you that, I don't think, but uh, that this is, this is actually just a background tendon. So, does this alter your thinking, perhaps? Yes. <laughs> I'm guessing when I saw it, I was like, oh, I see the disappointment. So, uh, let me guess. Were you thinking of calcifying aponeurotic fibroma? No. What were you thinking of? I was thinking a, a myoepithelioma because there was like... Oh, that's a, great, that's a great idea and actually a very, very legit differential. In fact, I think that's probably the closest differential for this tumor. And occasionally, I can't tell them apart. Um, Actually, plenty of times I thought, well, I'm not sure. And then I did molecular to be sure. So, do, okay, did you have anything else that came in the differential for this? Um, the other thing is um, like a mixoid chondrosarcoma. Good. And that's what this actually is. So that's, that's excellent. And I, again, I think that those two can have uh, quite a lot of overlap as far as their features go. And um, so what you, I like how you described that. We got multiple nodules that have mixoid background and in those nodules you got these round nuclei sometimes kind of epithelioid looking depends you know but they're kind of round cells so these uh, round cells in the mixoid background have a tendency to kind of run in cords and chains a little bit like these kind of like form single file rows it's not always real obvious some of these kind of seem single and clustered let's see if there's a better area with the cords and chains pattern uh, that's pretty good right here. See how they kind of hook up to their neighbors and they kind of follow along after each other and they kind of meander around through the, the mixoid backgrounds. And so that cord and chain pattern is pretty helpful. Round cells, mixoid background with cord or chain. Think of extraskeletal mixoid chondrosarcoma. And despite the name, it probably is not really like a true chondrosarcoma. They do sometimes have areas that look kind of cartilaginous, kind of chondromyxoid. Looking, I think I saw a little bit in here that looked a little, like vaguely, you can sometimes see like kind of lacunar spaces, but usually they do not have well-developed real cartilage. And they are probably not really cartilage, because they essentially almost always occur in the soft tissue, not in the bone. Um, there are chondrosarcomas in the bone that have mixoid change, but that's something totally different. That's just a conventional chondrosarcoma with mixoid change. These are their own unique entity, and they have a translocation between the EWSR1 gene, the Ewing's gene, and a gene called NR4A3. So if you really want to prove it, you could do RT-PCR or dual break-apart fish for both of those genes. The reason that you might want to do dual break-apart to make sure that you know both the Ewing's gene is rearranged and what the partner gene is, is because myoepitheliomas, which can look really similar to this, they can have chondroid looking areas, they can have cords and chains of round cells in a mixoid background, and like you said, they can have spindle cells and they can have sheets of cells. They can have a huge wide range of, of uh, findings. They also sometimes, particularly the soft tissue ones, they can also have Ewing's gene rearrangement. So again, the Ewing's gene is really, really promiscuous. It can be seen in a lot of different stuff. So um, that is a, a key. The other thing is immunostains can help that um, uh, myo, did you read what kind of uh, stains might stain myoepitheliomas? Uh, so, calponin, mm -hmm. S100, 
Um, I don't know how to explain this one, but GFAP apparently. I know it's weird, right? Supposedly GFAP, glial fibrillar acidic protein. And you know, the thing that's kind of strange is that in the, like the myoepithelial related tumors of the salivary gland, they kind of seem to be a bit different than the ones there are like primary uh, myoepithelial tumors of skin and even the, I mean, of soft tissue and bone and skin. And it seems like there's kind of two different groups It's much more complicated than we'll get into here, but they seem to have two different molecular backgrounds. Also, there seem to be some differences in staining a little bit. And the soft tissue ones tend to not express a lot of the typical myoepithelial markers. And all, it's particularly like the myoepithelial markers you would see like in breast myoepithelial stuff, right? Or, or in, um, you know, normal myoepithelium like actin. And those often are negative. So they're not very sensitive. Um, or P63, things like that. They can be positive, but a lot of times they'll be negative. So the, the kind of best combination of markers is the co-expression of S100 with either keratin and or EMA. So that keratin EMA, the epithelial kind of marker plus S100 is a really good clue to think of, think of um, myoepithelial tumors when you see that. This tumor, um, extraskeletal myxoid chondrosarcoma, tends to be negative, uh, if I recall, negative for keratins. I think it can express some S100 sometimes, but I think it's usually keratin negative. So whereas myoepithelial things are, uh, the vast majority are keratin positive um, or EMA. So, but I do believe that there, are, I think the last time I looked, there are occasional exceptions. So when I am struggling, I send for molecular um, because obviously the difference is big. So these can be kind of slow growing, but they tend to be persistent. They can metastasize sometimes years after diagnosis. I've seen some that kind of recurred again and metastasize over years and years. And the patient was still living, but still dealing with recurrent and metastatic tumor. So they can be real problematic. And in this case, this was so infiltrated around all of the, the mass of the foot and the ankle that it necessitated an amputation. So it's one of the many things to keep in mind when you see kind of cords and chains of cells, but particularly, particularly with this myxoid background, um, extraskeletal myxoid chondrosarcoma. Oh, look, I missed the whole piece over here. This is why you always start on low power. Look, I missed an even better piece and I spent all that time looking at the other piece when here we have real nice cords and chains. Look at that. And what else can do that is chordoma. Chordomas can make cords and chains. And they tend to have more like epithelioid cells and more cytoplasm, the bubbly physiliferous cells, but they can look quite like myoepitheliomas. So there's kind of, those are all things that can exist on a spectrum. And chordoma is also stained with S100 and keratin. So telling chordoma and myoepitheliomas apart can be quite challenging, but you can use a brachyuri, which is going to be positive in chordomas and negative in myoepitheliomas. So, so a good, uh, good tumor to know about there. That area is starting to look a little chondroid. See how there's kind of like little somewhat lacunar looking spaces. Right. But if you expect this thing to look like real cartilage, you're going to be disappointed because I, I feel like I've never, I've, I've seen one, I think I have one I just made a video about recently that had a little bit of stuff that looked kind of like cartilage, but overall they don't. They look mixoid with round cells and chains. So extraskeletal mixoid chondrosarcoma, relatively um, uncommon neoplasm. Oh, and there's even more, look, with really nice chains over there. All right.